Obrigada. I am a Yorta Yorta man and my mother's people are Murray River people from northwest Victoria. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land that we're on today, the Gubby Gubby people, Brother Lyndon, and pay my respects to the ancestors and the elders past and present. I'd like to start by sharing that I feel as a society we need to shift from a mindsness to an awareness of an ours way of living. Generally in our society today, when one gets ahead, they get ahead for themselves. Where we are taught from a very early age to compete against one another. Where we are spending trillions upon trillions on building space stations to go to the moon or Mars. When so many of our fellow human beings are suffering in such unnecessary states of poverty. This system I talk about is based on a mindsness, and it's about what I can get for me. But we don't realise that it's not only at the expense of others, it's at the expense of our own inner peace and happiness. Mindsness is based on the belief of separateness, that we are separate from everyone and everything, and that this separateness is born out of the fear of lack, that there is not enough for me, there is not enough for you, there is not enough for us to go around. We are continually bombarded with influences and messages from our environment that tell us if we don't have all these things in our lives, or we don't look like this type of person, or we don't have this type of job, or this type of car, or house, or partner, that we will not be loved and accepted for who we are. But the more we invest in this system, the more that we surrender our natural state of inner peace and happiness and it is replaced with a continual thirst for things and also a happiness that is outside of ourselves. But that, to me, is not the true concern. The true concern is not so much the physical starvation but the emotional starvation, which is so rampant in our society today. I had struggled a long time to allow this inner peace and happiness into my life. And when I was younger, I subscribed to that belief in lack and created a whole victim mentality where my experiences of racism, physical, emotional, and even sexual abuse, I blamed on the world out there and took all my frustration and anger out on the ones that I loved the most, or loved me the most, I should say. That was until I was introduced to a paintbrush at the age of 15. From there I found that painting was able to be a healing modality for me. Not only in the way that it healed those wounds, but it allowed me to see the bigger picture of unity and how we live together. And over the years I started to see how I could use my painting to also heal the world around me. Through my paintings I invite the viewer to delve into a variety of social conscience issues that relate to so many feelings and emotions that connect us to the world around us. Feelings like compassion and empathy. Love. And joy. A controversial, a true representation of mindsness is a controversial issue that we have today with asylum seekers and immigration, where we have people in the comfort of their own lounge rooms saying, you know, such things without fear of persecution, without fear of death or oppression or rape, saying, why don't they piss off and go back to their own country? This is an image of hopelessness. This is a painting I've done. And this is of a woman in Zimbabwe who watched her husband, her two sisters and her mother hacked to death in front of her had been on the road for 2,600 kilometres and with no food, limited water, pregnant with two children. How do you even fathom to say that to someone like that? Another issue that's a little bit closer to home is the issue with Aboriginal people, where you have people today still saying, you know, yes, the genocide happened, yes, the land was taken away, yes, the children were taken away and the women were raped. So what? What's their problem? Get over it. Get on with it. What's your problem? 
This is a man, Uncle Bob Randall, where my wife and my son and I went out to Uluru, his country, and spent time with him. And he took us to the tree where he was taken away as a six-year-old. He was ripped out of his mother's arms, he had chains put around his arms and his neck, made to walk 480 kilometres to the nearest police station. From there, he was shipped to Croker Island, which is 1,500 kilometres from his land off the top of Darwin. And for 33 years, he was not allowed to leave. He was not given permission to leave. When he did finally come back, his mother had passed away. A lot of his family were murdered or moved on. This man embodies ours as he travels the world alongside people like the Dalai Lama, talking and advocating unconditional love and forgiveness. On the other end of the scale from a mindsness is an oursness. Oursness is based on the principles of unity and sustainability, where we see the value of investing in our communities, in our natural resources, and a spirituality which is based around this oneness and this wholeness of living. A classic... Uh, sorry, in oursness, when one steps forward, we all take that step with them. Um, sorry, one second. A bit emotional for me too. Um, Aboriginal people had lived in this oursness for up to 80,000 years or more, where they invested in their tribal communities, they invested in their natural resources, and they invested in that spirituality that kept them connected with everything and everyone around them. I'm not saying that we should go back to living in the bush and give up our modern day way of life, but I do believe there needs to be a reciprocal learning, where as much as Aboriginal people need to learn about these numbers and these letters, non-Aboriginal people can take advantage of learning about these principles of sustainability and of unity. Um, that's where the dances, the stories and the art are an invitation for everyone to walk together with one another. So how do we shift from a mindsness to an oursness way of living? How do we affect the world around us? How do we create sustainable change? I believe there's so many ways. And one way that I believe that we can all do is hold that intention of unity so that when we speak, think or do, everything that comes from that ripples into the world around us. I believe it is up to us, no matter where we're from or where we've been, to be the change we wish to see in the world around us. I'd like to finish with a poem today, and it's a poem from Muhammad Ali, and it's classified as the shortest poem in history, and it goes like this. Me... We. Thank you.